So today we're taking a look at Peck Minor and the Lower Trap. It's a personal story. Those of you that have watched this channel for a length of time will know that I was dealing with a lot of Peck pain and serratus anterior pain not too long ago. Um, there was a potential possible mechanism of injury. I was maximally rotated through thoracic spine, chest up against the center console, reaching behind me uh, as far as I could, trying to grab something in the second row, hit a bump, very possibly did some sort of um, rib or serratus anterior um, damage. But I was on a mission to try and figure out what was going on, and along the course of that journey, it turns out I had mono, turns out I had alpha gal, turns out got sick off and on, may have been some COVID. It's been a whole journey. But one thing that I did not account for was the lower trap and the relationship that it has to the pec minor. And since I started working out my lower trap, my pec minor pain has significantly improved. So let's take a look. This is from ivyrehab.com. You can see the URL right there. Um, I tried highlighting this. It did not work well. So instead, I'm going to try and underline. Uh, the muscle imbalance in the upper extremity usually entails a short and tight pec minor and a long and weak lower trap muscle. And if you're thinking about this for a second, you're thinking, wow, that sounds like every person that walks into a clinic, right? Every person, um, when you're in your clinical rotation, you think, hmm, forward, head, rounded shoulder, which is just, it's, I'll draw it for you real quick. Um, if this is the head, this is a side view, this is a lateral view. This is really useful. I like Khan Academy right now. Lateral view, this is the head, there's the nose. Forward head means their head is here, their spine is here. And then rounded shoulders means what? Their shoulders are here. And then their back is back here. So you can see that, I'll change color for a second. Head, forward. I'm changing my posture while I write this because I'm really I'm doing it instead of being back here where it should be. And the shoulders are also forward. And when you're looking at it from this view, you're probably like, okay, so what? Your shoulders are forward. Because you're not thinking about anatomy. Your average person's not thinking about anatomy. I certainly wasn't thinking about anatomy my first year in um, physical therapy school. So here's what that means though. The muscle back here, the trap is long and tight. And the muscle is up here, which I really can't draw well from this angle. Let's draw a little circle. Pec minor is tight and short. So long, weak trap in the back, tight, short, possibly strong pec minor in the front. Let's take a, lift, a different view at this. And here we are. So you can see the spine, uh, the vertebr vertebral spine, right here. Boom. Right here. And you can see that the trap comes off of it. Uh, if you know anatomy, this is common sense to you. And over here, we have the spine of the scapula, also known as your shoulder blade. And over here, this area right here, is the acromion. And you can see this red block back here. That is the pec. Let me just write the pec for you real quick. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, well. E, E, <laughs> C, pec. So you can see the pec there. You have the trap and you have the spine. So you can see now how there's a little bit of a tug of war, right? So when you're forwardly rot or uh, forwardly pro you're protracted, there's no such thing as forward protraction, it's protraction. When you're protracted and your shoulder's brought forward, it's your pec pulling it, right? Your pec is pulling it forward, pec minor. Um, when it's going backward, retraction, your trap's engaged and other muscles, probably like your rhomboids, are involved in pulling that um, scapula back. Uh, I didn't label scap. I'll put an S for scap right here. This is the scap. Scapula. And that's the spine of the scapula. Same bone. It's just a different part of it. And yeah, everything else is the same. So you can see here how there's a tug of war going on here between your trap and your scapula. Yes, this is not the scale, by the way. You can see, though, how there's a tug of war. So if this gets long and weak, like it has, and the pec is overriding it, you can have pec pain probably also have trap pain but the minute you start training the trap here and you make it shorter and it has the ability to pull now you might get back to that natural body position that um, I say natural because it's 
was more natural. People used to spend more time walking and up and about instead of sitting at a desk, shoulders brought forward and hunch. So that natural posture of pulling the scapula back closer towards the spine, allowing the pec minor to relax. But the tricky part for me, anyway, with all this was loosening up the pec minor, which I had abused uh, for four years in the armed services, thinking bench pressing was the coolest thing ever and then not stretching at all after doing that, and then not working out my traps specifically. I did a little bit of rows, but I did not really target my trap. And, and keep in mind, the trap is made of three parts, right? There's the upper trap, <clears throat> upper trap, middle trap, and then the lower trap. And the lower trap specifically on me was incredibly weak. Hopefully it's gotten stronger. I'll have to assess it later. The lower trap is the key to pulling this down and back, kind of along, I'll change the color. Let's go blue. Down and along this line this way. And you can see how that directly runs counter to where the, um, the pec is trying to pull. And keep in mind, all this is from the posterior view, right? So we're looking from the back of somebody. That's how we can see the spine and the trap, the trapezius and the scapula and stuff. So you can see the pec minor is hidden in front because it's pulling from the front. It's pulling towards your sternum. And you have the trap, which is pulling back towards your spine, tug of war. So what I started having to do is those pesky Y or open can exercises. Um, I do... I still do with five pounds, um, three sets of 10 at least. I think I would start off by doing five sets of 10 and that was that was at body weight because I was so weak doing body weight burns and you might find doing body weight burns. There's also an exercise called, I call them Spider-Mans, um, where I would stand facing the wall. I have TheraBand or resistance tubing and I would pull up in a Y shape. So here, I'll draw that for you. So I'm standing here. You're, you're, you're looking at my back here. So I'm facing the wall, There's my legs, and I pull my arms up and back while holding on to the, um, the TheraBand. So up and back, then I would change to here, just pulling, um, like kind of making a T with my arms pulling straight back. And then I would end with pulling down in a way so my arms would look like this. So I call them Spider-Mans because I look like a spider because you're pulling up into a Y shape at first, then second, you're pulling straight back um, with both arms. So you're kind of like doing a big old open arms like you're trying to hug somebody, uh, you're trying to invite them for a hug and then you let your arms go slowly back together. And then the last one is like down and back. So it's almost like you're trying to um, Strike a Naruto pose, I guess. It's, it's like you're trying to run in a Naruto uh, movie, for lack of a better term. Um, I'll probably do a video on this later. But those things, and doing them back to back to back, really woke up my trap and really helped me with my posture. And the other thing, again, it says it right here. You really have to start paying attention to your posture. And you really have to start paying attention to your stress. And if you're over or under using. Because uh, those are, again, from the article that I said earlier. Those are some of the biggest things that they've noticed. Mine was underuse of one muscle, overuse of the other. So this right here, I would definitely say pay attention to because <clears throat> it can be both. It can be overuse of one and underuse of the other. So uh, hope you found this educational. Again, this was my personal story. This is what I found. Um, hopefully this can provide some insight to you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful. Share it with your friends. Um, why am I doing this? I'm trying to help create a culture that is more healthy, more fit, more active, so that way you can live longer and happy and healthier lives. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit those likes and subscribes buttons. It really helps. I'll catch you guys in the next video.